We have a food waste problem. Out of all the things we throw out, food occupies the most space in American landfills. The average American family of four throws out $1,600 of produce each year. Australians throw out up to 20% of the food they buy, adding up to about $1,036 annually for the average household. When food goes to the landfill, it's not returning to the earth in a pleasant way. As it rots, it releases methane, a devastating greenhouse gas. Although carbon dioxide is more prolific than methane in the atmosphere, methane causes greater short-term damage. It dissipates within a decade, but traps up to 100 times more heat than carbon dioxide in a five-year period. Composting your food scraps is an important step to take in reducing your personal impact. When we compost our food, we're diverting it from the landfill and allowing it to break down in a way that significantly reduces and even prevents methane production. On top of that, you can actually use the finished compost for gardening and landscape projects. Today, Alex and I are going to build a compost bin for Alex's mom. But first, a little more on how composting works. It's not as easy as dumping your food scraps in a pile. There's a little bit of science to it. In order for your compost to be happy, you need to have a balance of nitrogen and carbon, greens and browns. Greens include food scraps, coffee grounds, tea bags, garden scraps, and fresh grass clippings. Browns include dry leaves, straw, sawdust, twigs, paper napkins, and newspaper. You should have two to three times as much brown as green. If you have too much green, your compost pile will stink. Most organic materials can go into the compost, including eggshells, hair, fingernails, pure cotton, and wool. But you should not compost meat, dairy, bones, pet feces, or diseased plants. When you add to your compost, make sure you cover your greens with browns in order to prevent odor and pests. It's good to throw in some soil here and there as it will introduce more organisms into your pile. You'll also need to make sure your little science project is properly hydrated. If the microorganisms don't get enough water, they'll die. If they get too much water, they'll drown. You want to land somewhere in the middle. Cover your compost during heavy rains and add water if needed. For healthy compost, you also want to aerate your pile. This can mean turning it every few days and potentially driving holes into it to create air channels. If you do a good job of balancing greens, browns, water, and air, you can get finished compost every few months. Finished compost is dark brown, smells earthy, and has a crumbly texture. Compost returns important nutrients to the soil, which is great for gardening or growing food. If you don't have a garden, ask your neighbors, friends, and families if they would like some. You could even sell it. Okay, now for that compost bin. Alex's mom asked us to put together a compost bin with this spare trash can that she had laying around. So what we're gonna do is uh, drill some holes into it so it can get airflow. We're gonna set it up onto some bricks so that the air can come under. And that's about all we're doing to modify it. You don't need to go out and buy a super expensive compost kit. You can make your own at home pretty easily. Now we're putting things in the compost. We're just gonna take some leaves, some browns for carbon, and put them at the bottom. We're gonna put some bigger sticks and grass and whatever in here, just because to give a little bit of structure. We have some cow manure, it's totally optional, and I recommend, if you can, foraging your own instead of buying some from the store but it is good for the soil. But you shouldn't use uh, pet feces in your compost, bear that in mind. Yeah, cows are great because they eat grass. That'll so. introduce some nice bacteria into the compost in the same way that adding some natural soil and dirt would. All right, we've got some household vegetable scraps here. If you have time to cut up your scraps before putting them in the compost, that's ideal. It, the smaller the bits are, the sooner they'll break down. And we'll put some more browns on top. Now all we have to do is put water in.
The water we put in came out too fast from the holes in the bottom, so we are gonna put a bit of burlap sack in the bottom to help slow that down. Wood ash and charcoal have a high carbon content, so it's a nice way to balance out the nitrogen. But you don't want to use too much. And you put that lid on it so that it doesn't get too much water in it during heavy rains. You don't want your compost to get oversaturated. And also having a lid on it keeps pests and animals out. We also wanted to show you my grandmother's composting system, which she's been using for a couple of years. We've got like a foot and a half long piece of PVC pipe, drilled some holes around the edges at the bottom, all the way around, and you just stick it into your garden bed and put your food scraps in there, cover it up, and the worms will get into it. So for the compost that doesn't fit inside of the PVC pipes, Alex's grandma has a large bin where she puts all of the extras into compost. There's steam coming out of this compost, which means it's breaking down really well. Ooh, yeah, it's hot. Good compost should get hot. And it doesn't smell. So even if you're in a city, you can have a compost bin. As long as you keep it right, it won't make your apartment smell. Your landlord won't know any better. So this is a rubbish bin with a tap on the bottom. You just put some manure in there, horse or cow, and fill it up with water. And then out of the tap, you can get some liquid fertilizer to put on your garden.